You wanted icons? I'll give you icons. Hello there and welcome to Love Town. On the edge of Gateshead, at the edge of the north, this is what's coming up on this edition. Iraqi's Tokyo Lucky Hole, Gateshead Shopping Centre and Indoor Market, a website and Elizabethville. Right, it's 13 years, 1998, since this piece of Anthony Gormley metal was first erected. The angel, right behind me, looks over the A1 motorway, which is just over there, and it acts as a marker for people approaching Gateshead. Some say it's to warn people away from Gateshead. Now, popular local myth says that this statue was actually modelled on Gaza. Now, I can tell you that is not true. It is actually the artist Anthony Gormley's own body. Now, Gateshead, where Gaza is from, is a town that's undergone some big changes in the last few years. Always in the shadow of Newcastle, it's one icon iconic building, apart from maybe the new Sage, is the car park and surrounding shopping centre. Now, that has just been pulled down, but what I'd like to do is show you how it used to look. This is Love Town's historical look at Gateshead. Now, I don't know about you, but I need a bit of a break from all that architecture. So here is something naughty in this edition's photo book. Nobuyoshi Araki's Tokyo Lucky Hall. Photographs of the Tokyo sex industry taken between 1983 and 1985. They are a documentary of that age, very explicit, taken with all prostitutes and their clients knowledge it's a small book but i've not got a photo book with more photographs in it absolutely massive page count published by tashin
Now, I don't know if you've actually noticed, but the angel has its back to Gateshead. It is looking over there towards a little town called Burtley in the bottom of the valley, and in particular, a part of Burtley called, or what used to be called, Elizabethville. Now, Elizabethville, during the First World War, was populated by 6,000 Belgians who had come over to work in the local munitions factory. It was an amazing gated community, had its own gendarmes, its own shops, very enclosed, and it's not a very well-known story in this part, in these parts. This next slideshow are some unseen images of the Burtley Belgians. An amazing story there. Right, now it's time for this edition's photo website, which unusually, this edition, is an actual blog by the BBC's picture editor, Phil Coombs. Now, Phil Coombs is the picture editor at the BBC, and this is his blog on the BBC website. It is much more uh, feature-based than most photo websites with a lot of text, a lot of... Um, Photographic issues are covered, as you can see scrolling down, there's lots of stories. Um, sometimes guest bloggers uh, talk about their photography, um, what they're doing, uh, how, how their career works. Some very interesting stuff, there you see the royal wedding. And further down the page, you can see the story behind the news and pictures. A question of ethics, photographers in the spotlight. Um, this discusses the Leveson inquiry with some quite nice images to, to accompany uh, the article on how press photographers behave, paparazzi as well. Um, I scroll down, lots of good picture stories. There's one down here I want to show you occupied spaces of um, outside. Um, St Paul's Cathedral in London, a photographer has taken pictures of the inside the tents of the photographers, something he's shown a lot of initi initiative for and got some great pictures that we would not otherwise have seen. Um, I know from another article about this guy in the British Journal of Photography that he could not uh, actually get these, get money for these pictures but they have been published several times, they are a fascinating set. Um, 
One other interesting thing to show you, painted photographs, how newspapers used to doctor photographs to use in print um, before they were digitised, how they were cut out, and there's some quite interesting pictures. Um, Muhammad Ali, Marlena Dietrich, um, lots of good pictures, all, all for publication, and in a way pictures now do not get altered like that anymore. And Martin Parr has actually collected these, um, and they've been shown on Phil Coombs' website. The link for this website is quite a long one, but you can find a shortened version at the end of this podcast. Albert the Pug and the Thief Dog, a new illustrated children's book, words and illustrations by Gary Cook. Follow Albert the Pug Dog in his first big book, full colour, and as you can see, it's bigger than my hands. The book is available on Amazon and also through the Albert the Pug website. You can also get it for iPad and for Kindle. Follow Albert the Pug Dog in his first adventure. A thief dog has stolen his bone. What will he do? Who will help him? Buy it now. All right, Pat. That's about it for this edition of Love Town. I'm off to my mum's for some peas pudding and stotty cakes. See you later. Away the lads. And that is it from episode 7 of Love Town from the brilliant but vastly underrated Gateshead. These are the links you need and this is the end. Goodbye. Kawasaki, conjunctivitis, Cheryl Cool.